Hey everyone, thanks for watching. Um, so I made this fiber optic fire table and anytime you're involved in a fairly large project that has like somewhat expensive materials, you always want to do like a test run of a smaller size first to make sure there's no big mistakes. So for this one, I did like a one by one square pour with two different versions of fiber optic placement. One, I drilled through the entire form and then super glued it. And the other one, I just super glued to the bottom of the form. And it was a good thing I did this because you'll see later in the video what happens. I can explain it. Um, I also poured a couple of circular epoxy discs as like a, another test for a cup holder where the fiber optics potentially could shine through the cup, like the, 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 the little um, cup holder pads. But they ended up not doing well when it came to the concrete pour. Kind of the concrete got underneath it, so I didn't like the way it looked, so I didn't do that. I'm also using um, this special brand of um, like fiber enforced concrete additive. Um, anyway, it works, works out pretty well because it's some extra strength. So here you can see it. I let it dry for about two or three days, broke it out of the mold. And um, what happened with the ones that I drilled through the form is liquid from the concrete pour got into the form and it made an indentation under the wood, which pressed the form up a little bit. So it kind of proved a concept. The, the fiber is shown through pretty well, and I can move on to actually creating the larger form. I just picked up kind of like a three foot by one foot uh, fire, fire accessory uh, feature off of Amazon. It came with like the hoses, and then and when you're all done, you can kind of the fire rocks put inside. Where I'm kind of testing the placement seemed to fit pretty well, so I was happy. I can move on to creating the sides. You want to make sure you pre drill your melamine form holes. If not, you'll definitely split and it doesn't go well. where I began to make a foam, foam insert um, to glue in the bottom of the mold to make room for potentially um, glass shielding. So a little four or five inch tall glass shield. So if it's windy, I can put those glass uh, shields in and take them in and out. Uh, but you can see like the, the foam inserts there creates like a negative form mold. And then when you pour the concrete, take the foam out then you can put a piece of glass in. And then uh, uh, to get good corners, you want to use um, silicon, really thick form of silicon in the corners, and then a fondant ball tool to scrape it so there's a nice curve on the inside. And then next was time for super gluing about 400 fiber optic strands to the bottom of the form which actually will be the top of the table once it's poured and flipped over. That was the most time consuming part. And now here's the big day for doing the concrete pour. This is always a little bit stressful. You want to make sure you have your, all your, your parts because the concrete does set up fairly quick. So you have to make sure that you've got everything ready to go if you're going to do multiple pours. And I definitely recommend it make the first pour far more liquidy than it needs to be. That way you can actually 
find its way in between the fiber optics. I made mine not as liquidy, which is a mistake because when I dumped it on, it, I probably broke off about 20 to 30% of the fiber optic strands that I glued on. So do it really liquidy the first time. Here you can see I made up for the difference and made it really liquidy and try to get it in the bottom. Got to shake it out, get all the air bubbles out as well. Thought about using rebar to kind of force the fiber optics to the center of the form so it would be easier to um, put them in the center for like installation purposes but what i ended up using was a staple gun and this fiber reinforcement netting and i never ended up using the rebar so the netting went in pretty well this is the next day so the concrete was still a little bit wet enough to hold a staple and then i just kind of pushed the fiber optics toward the middle of the form and then staple this netting in to give the table some more strength. And then here's where I did the last few buckets of concrete to go right on top. So here's about four days later, demolding it for the first time with my son and uh, getting really excited to see how the fiber optics worked. Um, oh, what's what? What? They end up working well, so now I got it on it. the base, um, oh, that is and I'm just kind of prying out the styrofoam to use for a no, but it for looks a like glass wind it. shields. No, he'll right sand it down. Um, I'm gonna fill it in. Don't worry. I'm gonna oh, fill it in with epoxy. Oh. I think. Um. I did use a a, a palm sander to take down some of the rough spots, patched a couple of air bubble holes with some slurry, and then I put a concrete sealer on it as well. Here's a little b-roll of the construction of the base, just your typical metal studs, um, little dura rock on the side, and then I'm mixing up some mortar to put the, uh, the faux stone around the edge. Um, put a little spacer underneath, underneath so there's like some airflow uh, underneath and there's even a vent on the one side as well. All right, and here's the final product. It turned out really well. Um, it's a, a smart controlled LED lights underneath, and then so I can change to any color. So I've got down, down facing LED lights, and then of course the fiber optics on top. But yeah, I'm pretty happy how it turned out. I think it weighs about 200 pounds for the top, so it's fairly heavy.